Hey guys, welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to do a little bit of a test on the Game Bird. I've got the Express LRS R24D in there, and the objective today is to travel around, fly around, and get some data. And then after I trap the data, we're going to go back to the shop, and I'm going to show you how to lo load that data up in Companion and look at the graph. So that's the objective for today, is just to see how the Express LRS board by Maytech, the R24D, performs with the dual antennas. All right, here we go with the data logging flight for Express LRS and the Maytech R24D. So on this plane, I've got the R24D with dual antennas and I do have them set up in a 90 degree opposing format. And the idea there is to make sure that whatever mode I put this plane in, one of the antennas is leaving the optimal orientation and the other one is approaching it. So that's the idea, to take advantage of the dual antenna arrangement. So I just want to put her up high a couple of times, nose up, nose down, that kind of thing, just to get an idea in the data logging, what I see, you know, how the, how the diverse antennas are performing and if they're switching correctly and all that. That's what I'm after. This orientation arrangement right now, nose up, is like the worst case scenario that I can create. Because one of the antennas is straight vertical and the other antenna goes out basically pointing toward the tail. So in a straight climb like that, the one that's pointing toward the tail enters the correct orientation. Control-wise, everything feels fantastic. I have no issues with control. That was really sloppy. I wasn't in a good place to enter it, that's why. <laughs> Scary. That was something neat. Yeah, that got a little sideways on me. I was so focused on my altitude, I didn't manage my distance. I didn't manage the elevator. I was so focused on that altitude. Very nice. That was better. That was clean. Oh man, that almost stalled. <laughs> I don't know if you saw that or not. Uh, yeah, that almost stalled. I seen it, but I didn't recognize it. Gosh. All right, that's probably enough data logging. That's all I was really after is just get some data logs. Oh, we got to do one Harrier, right? Oh yeah, I almost forgot about those. Huh? We should do at least one. I'll go over to this side, get up in the air, wings over. High rate. There's high rates. That's good. Not bad. I think there's five minute park limit out there. Yeah. <laughs> oh. 
All right, that's my excitement. <laughs> so the wind picked up since we started flying. Now it's coming from the left, which means I'm gonna turn around and approach from the right-hand side. And then after the flight, we're gonna take a look at the screen real quick to give you an idea of what the uh, RSSI is showing me right after the flight, what the data is showing me right after the flight. And then we're gonna sneak in a helicopter video and then we're gonna go back to the shop and we're gonna put the data in the computer and look at the graphs. All right. Let me bring this back around and we'll take a look at the radio. I think that was a new record on the, just for the record, I think that was a new, a new low for me on the Harrier. I don't the think Harrier I, I have to agree. I don't but think I ever, I've seen that, 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 that was pretty low. That was pretty low. All right, Fred, let's take a look at the, uh, let's take a look at the radio. Can you get that? We may have to, you know what, let's do it up on the bench. We'll do it undercover. All right, there's a quick look at the numbers. I see on number one, I see negative 43 as, as the current, and I see negative 87 as low on both one and two. And then for receiver quality, it only went down as low as 98, which is freaking awesome. That's really cool. That's solid. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm at, a, no, I'm at 100% rate, so 98%, man. That's like, you know, uh, 100 packets per second. So worst case, I got down to 98 packets per second. So really solid link quality. Can't wait to put this on the graph. Now that we've done our flying, it's time to get our log file off the radio. And the way we're gonna do that is by connecting the USB-C cable to the top of the radio. Right here on the top port, just connect the USB-C cable. And on the screen, you should be prompted for joystick, storage, or serial. We'll click USB storage. That'll bring up a couple of windows that will allow us to get data off the SD card. Here are the two windows we're looking for. Remember, you don't have any reason to be in this one that has firmware.bin, we don't care about that. The one we're interested in has a folder structure that includes folders like widgets, themes, sound, radio, and so on. So scroll on down to logs, and I'm looking for my Gamebird log. There it is, the GB1 Gamebird, and that was from today's flying. So I'm simply gonna drag that over to my desktop. Now you can look at the log file on the SD card if you want, but I'm just gonna copy it onto my desktop and look at it there, and then I can put the radio away. It doesn't really need to be out. So copy it to the desktop, and now I can close this window, and we can take the USB cable out of the top of the radio and turn it off because we no longer need it. So we'll let the radio mount the card again. There we go. And we'll shut her off. So done with the radio. Now in OpenTX Companion, there's a little option in here. It's got a folder and you can see little graphs sticking out of the top. That's what we're interested in. So we're going to click on that and then we're going to hit open log file, navigate to the desktop where I copied my log file. And there it is, the GB1 Gamebird. I'm going to click on that and there we go. Now we're in our log section and now we can do stuff. On the left hand side is a list of sensors that this particular log captured. If you don't know how to set up sensors or log them to your SD card, leave me a comment at the bottom of this video and let me know. And if there's enough interest, I'll go ahead and put a video together on enabling SD card logging and capturing sensors. So here are the sensors that I have available. I've got one RSS. Now remember, this was an R24D, so two antennas. And what that means is that both antennas will log an RSS value. So I'm gonna turn them both on and you can see that there is some variation between the two. If we look at one RSS, that's the first antenna. You can see that we hovered between about negative 32 and we got down as low as negative, looks like about 85. In Express LRS world, that's really not that big of a deal. You can go a lot lower than that. If the radio is not happy with the link quality, including RSSI, it will make adjustments for you by increasing the transmission power. In this case, we only got as low as about negative 85, which is just fine. On the second antenna, we got down same area. It looks like about negative 85. And that one seems to have hovered in a lower average space. So negative 64 to about negative 72. So that's the data. And this is what's really cool about these charts is you can go back and forth and do a comparison. Now, if you wanna highlight two values at a time, you can press the control key on your keyboard and now you can overlap one sensor on top of the other. So you can add all the sensors you want. In fact, if I wanted to add link quality, I could do that. I could add my transmission power, my T quality, my 
RX path. There's all kinds of things you can overlay if you want, but then it starts to get a little hard to read the graph. So I like to do one or two sensors at a time. That gives me a pretty good picture. And what you can see on this one is the transmit power jumped up to about 50 milliwatts one time, but the rest of the flight, the entire flight, it was hovering at about 25. You can validate that information by looking in this table down below. And as you scroll down, you can see T power at 25 milliwatts all the way, all the way down. And somewhere along the lines, we'll see a hit of, of 50. There it is. There's the 50 right there. That's the only 50 milliwatt spike that I had on the entire flight, which is really cool. That means we had good signal to noise ratio. We had solid link quality. The radio didn't see any reason to increase the transmission power on this setup at all. Next, we'll take a look at link quality. And in link quality, you can see I got all the way down to 99%, which is, if you watched my link quality video on Express LRS, you know that that is just a spectacularly good number. So as far as the radio was concerned, it had all the data it needed and it could understand 99% of the packets. Worst case, we got down to 99%. Most of the time, we were hovering right up there at 100. On a rare occasion, we had one or two you know, packets that came in that were not understood and that's about it. So really strong link quality in this arrangement. I'm very pleased with that. The next thing we'll look at is the signal to noise ratio. So SNR on the receiver was awesome. It got all the way down to 10 point whatever, 10 point, <laughs> we'll call it 10.0. So that's very good signal to noise ratio and it explains why the flight looks so good. So overall, I have to say that I'm very, very pleased with these Maytech R24Ds. From a line of sight perspective, the radio kept the transmission power down at a minimal 25 milliwatts. I had spectacularly good link quality the whole time. I had very acceptable RSSI. I mean, what else can you say? From a flight perspective, this receiver definitely did the job. No questions about that. Hey, one other thing I wanna show you real quick. One of them is current. You can tell by looking at this graph, I never went above about 50, 52 amps. So the current draw on this flight was actually kind of low. Looks like it averaged somewhere between eight and 24 amps for the whole flight. And then as far as my capacity, that's another one that you get. You get your milliamp hour capacity and you see a nice solid trend line going all the way from the left to the right in terms of capacity that I consume during the flight. And then battery percentage, this is another cool little option. You can see we started up there around 100 and we ended the flight. So a couple hard little hits here, but we ended the flight. Those are probably touch and goes and takeoffs. That's probably what that was. But we ended the flight somewhere around 72%. So there's some really cool data you can get off your sensors that you can log with Edge TX. You simply fire up companion, open your log file, and you start clicking around and you can highlight multiple things. You can look at your highs and your lows. You can look for problem areas. And all I can tell you on the Express LRS system is that I'm very pleased with this. And I can tell you right now that Maytech R24D, until something better comes along, that's gonna be one of my mainstay receivers for my nice planes. All right, let's head back to the field and wrap it up. Okay guys, I hope you like the data collection information on the Express LRS system. If you like this kind of material, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell so you know when new videos hit the channel. That's all I've got for today. Take it easy. Later, folks. Hey, if you like the work I do here on RC Video Reviews, please consider joining me on Patreon. For about the price of a cup of coffee, you can help me keep making videos just like this one. If you'd like to help out, there's a link in the description and on your screen.